sometimes it really is just good to be out. It's beautiful out here today. Look, have a look. That is the River Lee in all its glory. Just watch the sun come up. Caught absolutely nothing. <laughs> but who cares? Isn't it amazing? I love it when fishing is kept simple. And uh, it doesn't get much more simple than this. We're talking about perch and we're talking about jig heads. I'm out in the garden, so we're going to talk about jig heads and after that we'll be going fishing together and you'll be able to see after a lot of hard work we get quite a result. Thanks for all the great feedback for the last perch fishing video when we talked about rigs. In that video I highlighted that there are four main rigs that I use when lure fishing for perch. Those are the Cheb rig, standard jig heads, the Ned rig and drop shotting. Last time we talked about the Cheb rig, if you missed that there's a link down in the description. This time, we're gonna be talking about just standard jig heads, nice and simple. Obviously, there's lots of different types of jig heads. Today, I'm literally just gonna be covering just a standard jig head, you know. There are only really, in my mind, two things to consider when selecting the right jig head, and that is the hook size and the weight of the jig head itself. I'm gonna kind of skip over the hook size part of that because I'm sure you all know how to select the right hook size. Um, obviously, it depends on the size of the lure. Think about where you want it to come out on the body of the lure and also think about the gape between the top of the lure and the, and the point of the hook. I'm not gonna talk about the bleeding obvious. Smaller hooks for smaller lures, obviously push up your hook size if the lure's gonna get bigger. The main thing that I wanna focus on is the weight because when I speak to a lot of good anglers, uh, when I fish with a lot of good anglers, ones that are much better than myself, they feel that people fish their weights too heavy. Um, and uh, I think they're right. Perch are known to love a falling lure. And uh, like I say, good anglers talk about something called hang time, which I think is really important. And that is to make sure that you've balanced the lure with the weight of the jig head properly so that it's falling nice and slowly, it's falling nice and slowly down through the water. When we're retrieving our lures, quite often we're picking the lure up through the water and we're letting it drop. And that hang time is where the lure drops in the water. We want that to be nice and slow. And you can only achieve that if you are balancing your lure with the weight of the jig head. Obviously, all of this is as a general rule. Yes, early in the perch season, when the water's still quite warm, I've had fish where I'm ripping the lure through the water quite quick. Of course, that has happened. I'm just talking generally speaking. Most of my fishing is done with jig heads that are about two grams to five grams. Very rarely will I go up to seven or 10. The only time that I would is, um, you know, if there's a lot of water in the river or if there's a lot of current and I need to get down, then I would go heavier. But then I would argue with myself, you know, am I trying to fish in too fast a water? And I should probably go and look for some slack water and then go back to using a lighter jig head. Of course, I'm talking about general river fishing here as well. Um, you know, your rivers might be bigger, deeper, uh, different to this. And of course, I'm certainly not talking about fishing for perch in large reservoirs. I'm just talking about fishing in our local rivers. So select a jig head where the size of the hook matches the size of the lure that you're using and the weight of the jig head allows you to achieve that hang time. The only other thing to say is to have lots of different jig heads in your box, different hooks, different weights, different sizes, so that you can fish all situations regardless of what's happening on the river when you get there. So that's enough of that. I think it's time to go fishing. Still hoping for that bite. I've covered a fair amount of water so far this morning. Dozens of swims. Yeah, and this is what it's like around here. I have to put 
put in quite a lot of effort for your fish. And that is the lee for you. I think that's just what it's like by character, you know. What it lacks in quantity, it makes up for in quality. See, I'm going too fast with this again. Always having to concentrate on slowing myself down. Yeah, I mean the lee, it's, it's like I say, it's difficult to bag up on the lee. It's one of those waters, you know? I think they stopped match fishing on the lee years ago because no one ever caught anything. And uh, that's just the kind of river it is. The pattern is blank, 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 absolute donkey. I'm trying to make sure that I don't ignore the edges. Now the river gets quite wide here, which might encourage you to go right out into the drink, but all the cover's in the edge. So always explore the edges. So nothing to show for it on that one. Um, and that's what it can be like, you know. Um, that is uh, fishing on the lee, uh, the, the main lee that is, you know, not the upper lee, which is a, a, a different story, but fishing on the main river is quite tough for, for perch. And it can get really tough in January, February, you know, we have to work quite hard for our fish, I think. Um, and uh, I, I want to get that across, you know, it's, uh, it can get quite tricky. So nothing on that session, as I say. So it's a different day, a different river, still in the Lee Valley. Um, let's see how we get on. A little bump then. Let's just cover it again, just in case. Yes. There we go, we've got something. I don't know what, but we have got something. Thought I felt a bump. And as that. And it is a cucumber. Look at him. Tiny little fella. Thought I felt a little something. There we go. Well, it's something. Let's see if we can Put him back and maybe get a perch. Now, if ever you get a pike, even a small one, make sure that you check your line. Even a little pike, their little teeth can damage your leader. I stepped up the leader slightly along here because I know there are a few pike. You know, normally I'd fish a seven, six or seven pound fluorocarbon leader. Along here, stepped it up to 10. And very rarely will I get bitten off. Right, let's get it back in, see if we can uh, get a perch. So alongside the boat. Make sure the line lays exactly where you want it to. And again, we'll just bring it along. Trying to hit that gap between the bottom of the hull and the riverbed. Obviously you go any higher than that. If you go any higher than that, the fish aren't going to be able to see it.
thought I felt a little knock then. Cover it again. Come on. No. So again, not a lot happening there. You know, it's getting quite brutal here along the Lee Valley. Um, but, you know, we'll stick at it. So again, we're on a different stretch, different day. Um, we're going to give it a go. Uh, before I do, I wanted to show you something. So the video is about jig heads and it's about keeping things simple and it doesn't get much more simple than this. These are the Corum Ready Shads. If you want to keep things really simple, you can buy these Ready Shads from Corum. They've done all the hard work. They're, it's a buoyant lure. They know how much weight to put on the end. When you're retrieving them, yes, they drop through the water very slowly, but they're buoyant, so they stand upright on the bottom, keeping the hook away from any muck or mess that's on the bottom. And that is quite often when the perch will whack them. Um, but yeah, a lot of the hard work's been done in terms of balancing it all. You can just tie it on and concentrate on your fishing. Well, I'm back on the weir pool and the water has settled down. Uh, dropped back down to a kind of normal level. Right, well, we've got something. I don't know what it is. I want it to be a perch. Let's have a look. No, it's the usual suspect. Ugh. Come on. Chucked it out in the net as they often do. There we go. The usual suspect. There you go. Let's try and get a perch. Um, you've just seen me have that little jack pipe, tiny little thing, on only about the third cast. Let's hope there's a few, few perch at home, maybe. Had what felt like a little knock down the bank. Let's cover it again. No. Nope. That was a bit further from the bank than I wanted it. Let's try again. No. Still not quite getting it where I want it. Oh, yes. That was a hit. That was hit by something there. So, oof, that really hit it. Come on, come on. Yeah, that's cracking. Come on. Ah! That was definitely a hit before. Definitely a hit. All right, come on. And now I've not hit the spot. Oh no. Getting a bit excited. Right, come on, calm down. Hit the spot. I'd love to retrieve it slower through there, but there is some low lying weed. Come on. That could be the one. Come on. Well, whatever hit it, I ain't having it now. <laughs> Bugger. Whatever hit it, isn't having it now. I'm gonna try and cover it a couple more times. Come on. Oh no, that's a terrible cast. That's pretty good. And I'm gonna go quite fast. That was too close to the bank. I'm going to chuck it up a tree or so in a minute if I'm not careful. Yeah, that's pretty good. Come on. Oof. No. No. Ah. It's a shame. Oh. 
Oh, don't know what happened there. Got a tangle. Unbelievable. Completely new section. Let's give it a go. See if we can catch up with one of these perch. Another pike. Come on then. Oh well. Keep going. Just keep going, I might get that perch. Ugh. There seems to be pike everywhere at the moment. Another nice pike. Or another little pike. Let's get him back. So, yeah, it's getting getting tough. Struggling on um, in another location today. I'm just going to take you through something that I think is a little bit of an edge. Um, it might not be, but it's something that I do. Um, so I'll take you through that now. So if you're one of the carp boys, you probably recognize what this is. It's a hook sharpener. This one's made by Jag. Um, and obviously I'm using it to sharpen my jig heads. Perch have got a very bony structure to their mouths as have pike. Of course, we're constantly hitting snags and branches and uh, these hooks get blunt very, very quickly. You wanna make sure that the hooks are sharp to make sure that they go in and they stay in. I just take the hook and literally I take the sharpener and I just take it down one side, then the other, very gently. You don't actually have to do that much. And then just down the front of the hook as well. And just build it up and feel it across your nail, just like you would if you were carp fishing. It's just a bit, of, it's just something I do, just to make sure that they're sharp. Oh, just had a hit right here in the edge. Almost at my feet. One of those ones where it was on and then off. Come on. Definitely was a hit. Definitely was a hit. Ah! Come on. Let's try some pauses. So, what I do when I get a hit like that, but it doesn't convert, and now I can't seem to bore it onto the hook, I just acknowledge where I am. I acknowledge exactly the spot, and I will come back. I'll go down the bank for a bit, do a few more swims, and then I will make a point of coming back to this location in like, whatever, 20 minutes or so. Cover it again. And see if whatever hit my lure there is ready to take it then. So back here in about 10 or 15, I reckon. Right, I've given it 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I'm back in the same swim. Um, the one that I had that knock in. Let's just see if anyone's home. Might be able to see since then, it started raining, so it's not very nice. But I think I definitely did get a knock here. So I've rested it for a while and come back in hope that whatever hit my lure might still be about and now ready to take it.
No, not happening. Come on, be a perch. It's a perch, it feels like a good one. Happy days. I don't know if you can see that, but absolutely nailed that. Just there. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Soaking wet here, but absolutely don't care. Look at that beast. That is awesome. I've gone up and down the river. Lots of different spots. Lots of little pike and eventually got what I'm after. Caught on a straight jig head, just a little nimble. So pleased with this. I've worked so hard for it. Love it. Look, come on. So absolutely amazing. What a result that was. Um, as you can see, I'm back at home now. Uh, it's early morning, it's a cold one. Uh, but that was a couple of weeks ago now. I went back a couple of days later with the Ned rig, fishing more localized, and unbelievably caught another fish, um, quite considerably bigger. So, uh, fantastic. After all that effort, finally found them, went in with a bit more finesse, fishing more localized, and absolutely nailed one on the Ned rig. And the Ned rig will be the next one in the series. We've done chirp, we've done the jig heads. Ned rig will be the next one. And um, great that we've nailed a fish on that uh, for the next video. So I look forward to sharing that with you. Something that's come up is that obviously in the video, I highlighted that there were two things that I consider with jig heads. Uh, one is the hook size. One is the weights, which felt really important. But what's been highlighted to me, and maybe a weakness in my own fishing, is the colour of the jig head. And that's not something that I've really explored. So I really would be interested to hear from you, uh, maybe down in the comments, about how you've gone about using coloured jig heads maybe to improve your fishing. Because um, I say, it's not something I've done a lot of, and it's maybe something that I should be exploring. And I think that's it for our jig head video. Uh, thanks very much again for watching. Enjoy your fishing and be lucky.